of the 10th National Business Convention on the theme of Challenges in the Dynamic Business Environment. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our speaker, Mr. Deepak Chawla, Head HR, Reliance Infrastructure Limited. I would like to call upon Mr. Suresh Chandrapadi, Director, Balaji Institute of International Business, to welcome our guest with a bouquet. Abhishek Hemrom, Student Manager, Balaji Institute of International Business, to introduce Mr. Deepak Chawla. Ladies and gentlemen, a very warm and pleasant afternoon to all of you. I, Abhishek Hemrom, feels immense pleasure in introducing our guest speaker, Mr. Deepak Chawla. Sir is the head HR of Reliance Infra, covering business such as distribution, transmission and generation, cement, defense, metro, roads, airports, and EPC. Sir, Sir has completed his bachelor's of engineering in electronics and power, diploma in marketing, financial management, and also in journalism. Sir has worked in various junctions such as projects, operations, business development, sales and marketing, strategy and planning, learning and development. Sir is also a member of All India Management Association, Indian Society of Training and Development, and National Human Resource Development Network. Sir has also published five books on various subjects. His latest book is Business as Usual. A collection of short stories has been a bestseller listed in Best of 2015 by Crossword. His collection of Cramps and Guzzles, Sajda and Rubiru, published earlier, have also been appreciated. <coughs> Sir, we feel immensely gratified to hear you, hear your experiences of corporate career and are highly privileged to have you amongst us over here. Now, I would like to call you upon here to share, to enlighten us with your words of wisdom. Thank you. to visit many educational institutes. Very subconsciously in your mind you start benchmarking one against the other. I've never seen anything like this, honestly. And I'm also very intrigued and wondering that what has gone into the session over the last two and a half days that is keeping your claps so vibrant until now. Because typically, 
on the final day of such a session, the last two days, and the post lunch session of the final day, you still are smiling, you still look happy, you are still clapping, and clapping at someone like me. Uh, so honestly, I'm happy. So I don't know what you guys have been hearing, interacting on the subject, which says challenges in the dynamic business environment. Though it's very difficult to make it interactive in such a huge audience, but I think I would love to make it slightly interactive at least. So just if somebody can share, and I'll tell you why I want you to share this, so that it is less torture on you. Because I don't want to repeat what's been already told to you. So it's in your good interest that we be interactive. So if someone can just share uh, what over the last two, two and a half days you've been hearing about, what is it that those thoughts about the challenges uh, that you've learned or heard about? Any thoughts? Please don't my happen, make my happiness so short lived. Yeah, so some of the speakers have been speaking to you for the last two days. Some thoughts? Sir, Artificial intelligence, innovation. So we heard about disruptive leadership, globalization, the challenges we face in the, this, this dynamic changing world, business world rather. Uh, De-globalization, we saw that certain economies are go going away from globalization because they are facing certain problems. And thank you. Okay. I just heard somebody speaking about reliance. What is it that you want to know about reliance? I'll tell you something. When we talk of globalization, VUCA, leadership, you all are fresh students going to get into the real world. Some of you may have worked for some years and then taken a break for academics. I have been hearing this theme ever since I was in my college. I have been hearing about these topics, these issues. Of course, the technology part, what we are talking of IoT that time. Somebody used to say, you know what, when I was in college, hey, floppy disk. You heard about floppy disk? Yes. Yeah. So like you guys are talking about IoT, we used to be talking about a floppy disk. And believe me, I was doing my final year engineering and we had a project and one seminar as we used to call it. My seminar was on a floppy disk. Nobody had ever seen a floppy disk. So I made a cardboard cutout of a floppy disk. A 5 inch, 1 foot was the size. So you make a floppy disk how it rotates in the disk drive, because not all disk uh, computers had a floppy drive also. That's the technology part of it. But uncertainty, rapidly changing, leadership, and today someone has named this VUCA. VUCA was always there. It's just coined today as VUCA. Dynamic business environment. If you go back to the early 20th century, 20th century, not from 21st century, and if somebody would have said, there are so many thousand typewriters in the country, please do your research and please do your algorithm and do your Excel and come back to us, whatever Excel did not exist, but whatever would be your computation mechanisms. 
how many computers would exist in 19, uh, how many typewriters would exist in 1950? So if somebody takes a call in the year 1900 that how many typewriters will exist, what will be the typewriter's market? Almost extinct by the 70s, almost extinct. So change is something which is, as we all know, happening all the while. It's not that it is happening now. It's not that the challenges are just now. It's not that the dynamic environment of business is only today. It's always been. And I'm looking forward to those days when some of you would come as a speaker in this institute and speak on the very subject. Because we are always in transition. There is never, never ever a steady state. There is only a full stop or there is a motion. So this motion is always going to be there. And what we spoke about, the leadership, the strategies, uh, globalization, let me ask you one very simple thing. You in your position right now, what does it mean to you? Business leaders have come and given their talks, have given their perspectives, made presentations. You would be hearing what's happening around in the world from the management gurus. What does it mean to you individually today? Can you just share a thought? What does this challenge mean to you today as an individual in your position? VUCA is where it is, IoT is where it is, artificial intelligence is where it is, globalization is where it is, Chalo, global warming is also where it is. For you individually today, right now, what does that challenge mean? Just give me a thought. What does it mean to you individually today? Because you are the one who, are, who is going to go into the real world and work from tomorrow. So as an individual, what does this challenge, what does this dynamic business environment mean to you as an individual? Opportunity. Okay, adaptability. Survival. Competition. Innovation, skills. skills, survival is twice I have heard, very dangerous. Are you apprehensive about your placements? No, really, I'm asking, are you apprehensive about your placements? No, no doubt this institute has got a fabulous record of placements. But let's face it, it's a fact, isn't it? when Infosys is cutting jobs, Ola is cutting jobs, Flipkart is cutting jobs. For you at your level, I think at the starting point, this is one of the greatest concerns, one of the greatest challenges, isn't it? Notwithstanding all those lofty statements and those postulates, isn't it a reality for you tomorrow when you step out? And assumingly you get into one of the organizations that you're wanting to get into, then what? Name any uh, aspirational organization that you would like to be in. One from here, one from here, one from there. This side, any one organization? HUL. Okay, chalo. HUL. I heard two HUL and Amazon, so I'll take both. This side? Google and Apple, Google and Apple, Shall I'll take these two, these were the more vociferous ones. That side? Is the placement coordinator sitting in that group? I am seeing it as a marketing pitch, that since the HR head is here, so let's say Reliance, right? Okay, <clears throat> so assumingly you get into HUL, I'll come to Reliance later. <laughs> you get into Apple, you get into Google. What happens on day one, week one, month one? What will you find there? What would be your challenge in the first month? In the dynamic business environment, you get into HUL. So what's your month one challenge? 
सॉरी अरे भाई सर्वाइवल इज बिकमिंग वेरी वेरी क्रिटिकल या एवरीथिंग इज डिपेंडेंट ऑन सर्वाइवल या कैन वी हियर समथिंग वेरी डिस्टिंक्टली मंथ वन चैलेंज इन योर ऑर्गेनाइजेशन इन योर ड्रीम ऑर्गेनाइजेशन Adapting with processes, I heard. So it's, it'll be nice if one person stands up and says, so that we can all get the benefit of it. Anyone here? What would be your month one challenge? Understand the environment of the company. Okay. Who? There was one girl who said HUL in the first place. Who was the girl? You said HUL. So what would be your month one challenge? okay so understanding the culture understanding the systems and processes would be a month one challenge i go to this group and say apple after the i7 release okay what would be your six month challenge the six month challenge of the guys who go into apple or google somebody from here what would you okay so i hear the almost the same thing month one challenge also is the same month two challenge also appears to be on the same line year one challenge this group what would be your year one challenge be visible enough, be visible enough. wow distinguish yourself from the other peers yeah understanding your own that you have to meet okay and to do that if you have understood your goals how do you go about doing it i'm asking you the hr manager comes and gives you your goal sheet this is your set of kras and kpis go do it understanding so it's boiling down to the same thing again the processes the process understanding the processes she said right understanding how hul works understanding what works in the marketplace understanding what our competitors are doing and then achieving my kras apple google yeah right understanding the relationships between the colleagues the manager and maybe the rest of the ecosystem that we are working in right so where does this all boil down to iot innovation globalization your first month challenge your six month challenge your first year challenge and let me put it your lifelong challenges learning and unlearning your life long challenges learning and unlearning because business environment is going to be changing the ecosystem is constantly going to be changing what you are going to end here is only your academics your learning begins now and your learning which begins now if you stop it you are dead because business environment the socio political environment is continuously going to be changing all the while it's always going to be in transition so you've got to be constantly learning and unlearning and relearning and let me tell you the most tough part of it is not learning it is unlearning because we've learned to do things in certain way and one year two year down the line three years down the line or maybe you have done a stint of 4 years 5 years in hul and now you want to go to png you are into a construct of hul png operates differently for you it will be important to 
unlearn certain things which you imbibed from HUL and see how PNG works. Putting it in a larger context, that your entire business environment, the corporate sector, the business, the policy, the regulation, you were used to doing certain things in a certain way. The regulatory framework is changing and technological advancements is happening. The way you used to be doing things earlier and what you used to be doing earlier is no longer valid. It is very, very important for us to untrap ourselves from the learnings. The learning is always got to be current. So one of the most important parts of this entire session, which I want to let you have as a takeaway is the learning part of it. Learning has to start now. Unlearning has to be done at the right time. Relearning has to be always constant. And it's not about just the business environment. It's about your own self also. We were having an interaction with the junior batch some time ago in the adjoining hall. Some of the thoughts which came up, I am interested in this area and I would like to work in this area. Isn't it? Whether it's marketing, finance, even in marketing, I want to be in whatever side, client side, rural side, whatever, there are so many aspects to it. We have our prefixed notions that this is what I want to do because this is what I like and anything which is contrary to what I like, anything which puts me into a region which is uncomfortable for me, I like to avoid. Natural human tendency. That's where, as an individual, I am stopping, blocking my learning. And the greatest learnings always happen from the toughest and the dirtiest things that happen to you. So while it may sound very, very glamorous to be a part of Google or Amazon or Apple or HUL, the action, the real business happens at the grassroot level, at the ground level. And you said of reliance. And one of the greatest things that I value of reliance might be symbolic, always with your sleeves rolled up. Always sleeves rolled up, ready to do the dirty job right away. Ready to get your hand and feet dirty. It is very easy for us to be trapped into PowerPoint presentations, into Excel sheets, into researches done, reports made available. Unpeel the layers and go down. You find that you're not there. You're on shaky ground. So therefore, regardless of the times, another challenge and another important input, learning happens how? Learning happens by doing it. Learning does not happen by not doing it. Get your hand and feet dirty. Go and do the dirtiest job. And let me tell you, dirty jobs come to the fortunate ones, not to everybody. I remember uh, during my early part of my career, uh, there were three, four guys of us who were selected for a project somewhere in Bhutan. You've heard of Bhutan? Been there anywhere? Yeah. <coughs> so we were an electrical company and we were to execute a three-year contract over there. And uh, we were three of us young engineers and we were selected to go for execution of the project. And so obviously we were very elated, very happy to go there. We were not eligible for air travel or anything. So it was a two and a half day travel from Mumbai to a place called Funsholing, which is on the border of India and Bhutan. And from that place, the site where the work was happening was about 160, 170 kilometers away on the hills, which used to take about four hours, five hours. And in this place, we had a liaison office. The job of the liaison office was 
all what we call in our parlance clerical work. So there is material coming from India. Uska chalan banana hai. You have to do the entry, give the input here. There are people coming to work, migrant laborers are there, prepared their passes. There are people coming from Bombay going to here, uh, the site, people coming from site going to Bombay, do their ticket bookings. This project was funded by the Indian government, so there was an element of sales tax return associated with it. So material used to come here, you do an entry into the Department of Commerce there, they will give you certain certificates and then you can claim back. Certainly not the job of an engineer who was supposed to go for execution of the project. Right? So three of us when we went there, the guy who was in the liaison office there, he said that I have instructions that one of you has to stay back here and the two of you will go to the project site. So I said, this is shocking. This is cheating. We were told that we are going to be sent to a project and now you're saying that one of you has to be in this liaison office doing all this kachra work. But we couldn't do much. First year engineers, first year challenges, first year learnings. Can't do much about it. So we thought we were conversing amongst ourselves. See, what we'll do is, we will do turns. One week you be there, one week I'll be here. So all of us get to go there and all of us get to be here also. So he said, no, no boss, it's been decided. Deepak will stay here. I said, why me? I don't know. I've got instructions from top that you've got to be staying here. It sent a signal to me within, am I so incompetent that they are saying these two will go to the site and I'll stay in this Lysen office doing all this kachra work. But can't do anything. And now you're trapped in the hills out there. You can't do anything about it. And they told me, they assured me that don't worry, there's another guy who's going to come from Bombay. He will take over this job and then you can go to the site. I said, when is that guy coming? Maybe in three, four weeks time. I said, that's okay. Three, four weeks is chalo, manageable. You can't do much about it. Three, four weeks turned into three, four months. Three, four months turned into six, seven months. And guess what? I realized, boss, what an experience I'm getting here. What learnings, commercial learnings. So much I have learned about immigration, so much I have learned about transportation, so much I have learned about sales tax. And when eventually I went there, back to the original place where I was supposed to be and I was sharing this with my colleagues, they envied me. So the job which I thought was a mundane kachra job, the job which I thought was not for me and for which I felt, why me? Till today, whatever I learnt on the job is a treasure for me, is a learning for me which none of my other colleagues got. So it's very important for us to understand where the learning is coming from. And more often than not, the learning comes from things which you don't like to do, you don't want to do. So please, if you want to be dealing with the challenges of the changing business environment, of the dynamic business environment, and somebody asked us a little while ago, is it good to be jack of all? To my mind and to my experience and to my conviction, you've got to be an all-rounder these days. Unless and until there are absolutely passionate specialists that he is a complete R&D guy, he will do only R&D and nothing else. His life is committed to R&D, fine. But for the rest of us, to my mind, we've got to be successful all-rounders, not just all-rounders. You may have specialized in whichever field you have, have, whether it's marketing or finance or human resource. And let me tell you, you would have heard my profile from them. I don't have an HR qualification. I have an engineering qualification. I have a finance qualification. I have a marketing qualification. I have a qualification in journalism, but not in HR. Somebody felt that I could do HR as well. And so I'm standing in front of you in this position. I never learned HR, but 
people felt, people realized that I have imbibed in me what is required to be expected from a person who is heading HR. I moved into telecom in sales and marketing. I was moved. At that point of time, it was in the year 2000 when the dot-com boom was just happening. An electrical engineer who understands only power, generation, transmission, distribution, suddenly getting into internet. We were an internet service provider. Telecom didn't mean the telephony. It was internet service. And say you do sales and marketing. I called this operations guy and said that I know of a power plant 100 kilometers from here where we own. So there is a turbine, there is a generator, there is coal which comes and power is generated and through the lines it comes here. Can you tell me where is internet generated and how does it come here? I had no time. I had to learn. Reliance teaches you this. Somebody asked about Reliance. And that's why Reliance and some similar organizations are what they are. While we have a robust training, development, all those things which are required to be there in the system, but the actual learning, though you know that rule of 70, 20, 10, that's fine. But actually the learning happens on the fly. You don't get time to learn. You just get no time to learn. Because it's a dynamic business environment. There is no learning curve. It's just vertical. There's no curve. It's absolutely vertical. So when you are in this kind of a stage and you're always in a stage of learning, the challenge that I want to put in front of you is, and which you said, to make yourself seen, make yourself visible. How do you do that? You are constantly learning. So when when I put you to use? Have you all heard something about trust? What does trust mean to you? Value. What does value mean? Do they teach you values in the school? Hmm? You learned yourselves. Because those are basic human traits. If you want yourself to be seen, to be known, to be recognized, that yes, there is a person who can be trusted, means what? He is a good learner. He is a good performer and he can be trusted. Means what? What would it mean to you? I am saying he is learner, he is a performer, he is a deliverer and he can be trusted. Yeah? Consistent. Okay? Reliable. Responsible. Yeah, somebody was raising hands. What does trust mean to you? Employable. Okay. For me, it's very simple. And the building blocks of trust are very, very simple. Sorry? I didn't get it. Believe. Honesty. So I'm saying that uh, tomorrow morning there's a meeting at 9 a.m. So please attend the meeting. Building blocks of trust. I am there at 9 a.m. Consistently, whenever, wherever I am required to be there, I am there. Sir, I'll uh, send it to you tomorrow. When are you sending this report? Sir, tomorrow I'll send it to you, sir. How many times do we do that? So then the boss says next day, in the evening, 
Are you able to send me that report? What happened? Ah, sir, little work is left, sir. Sir, I'll send you by evening. So evening goes. Boss goes home. And he feels like the boss to gaya abhi. He'll see it tomorrow only. So tomorrow, first thing, I'll mail it. And he mails it at 9.30 next morning. He's done his job. He said tomorrow. It didn't happen tomorrow, but it happened day after tomorrow. It's fine. To my mind, trust is that if I said I'll do it tomorrow, I will do it. Come what may. Yeah? Because in the changing business environment, in these challenges, what will hold you steadfast, what will make you grow, what will make you survive is your basic trust which a person can have in you, which your organization can have in you. We talk of work-life balance, right? It's a very, very in thing, work-life balance. So tomorrow is, or rather today say is a Sunday, and my colleague will vouch for it. I have my plans, and there is something which has come up. And I say, boss, there is something to be done today. Are, are I already have my booking done. I've got to go. Because it's work-life balance, and it's a Sunday, yeah? After all, work-life balance means I'm not going on my office duty hours, yeah? I'm going on a Sunday. How many times such situations will come in life where you would be required to rise on the occasion, rise to the occasion, that on a Sunday when you have planned something and there is something to be done. And you leave that personal commitment aside and do this. To my mind, that's work-life balance. Because you will not get such situations always to rise to the occasion. And when you get those situations to rise to the occasion and you compromise it with your so-called work-life balance, you are losing your opportunity in life. You are losing an opportunity to learn. You are losing an opportunity to deliver. To me, work-life balance management in this manner is trust. Because business happens all the while. You run business for customers, for stakeholders. And stakeholders and customers are going to be demanding. Extremely demanding, as we all know, as you all are. You would not like your demand to be compromised on someone else's work-life balance. That does not mean that you don't need to have your personal life. I'm not saying that. All of us need to. How many of you have other interests? Painting, singing, dancing? I'm really happy to see almost some people raising two hands also. How many of you are you can think of your parents having similar interests when they were in college. <laughs> Hands have gone down. And how many of them still pursue what they were pursuing in college? <clears throat> Epsimil, isn't it? Do you all want to go the same way? Do you all want to go the same way? So if I want to sing and my Sunday is for singing and something else has come on that Sunday and some other day I wanted to sing and my wife tells let's go to the mall and then some other Sunday I wanted to sing and there is a wedding and I have to go there and then some other Sunday I wanted to sing and there is an hospitalization in the family. Was I wanted to do, I couldn't do it. 
So who's compromising your work-life balance? What does work-life balance mean? Work-life balance means pursuing my interest, what I want to. Could be my outing with the family, could be my personal hobbies, interests. I have to find time for them. I have to look out opportunities for them. It may not exactly happen the way I want it to happen, but it's all in my hands. So, how do you build that trust? How do you keep that learning with you? How do you do that work-life balance in the manner which is expected of you in resilient organizations? This brings me to another interesting aspect. One of the biggest outcomes of these challenges in the business environment is disappointments. Business disappointments, career disappointments, growth disappointments, relationship disappointments. And it's not related to the business alone, it's related to our personal life as well. Isn't it true for all of us, disappointments? And if disappointments are true, equally true is the resilience, our ability to rise above the disappointments, our ability to rise above these challenges which are always going to be there. And it's not easy. It's very easy to lose heart. It's very easy to feel discouraged. It's very easy to feel I am unwanted. It is very easy to fear failure, all of which is very, very human. So whether it is individuals or whether it is organizations, the internal resilience is something that has to go along with us in any kind of business environment. So coming back to where we started and summing this up all, and I'll take some thoughts from you also. In this world of dynamic business challenges, your key mantra is learn, unlearn, relearn. Trust. What is trust? I will do what I say, not that Rowdy Rauthodwala dialogue. Nobody can falter me on delivering on my commitment. We spoke of relationships. Somebody said about relationships, networking. And I'm giving you very, very fine aspects and examples of trust again, of your growth again. How many times does it happen or can happen that three, four of you together got to do a project or a presentation or an assignment um, and one of you was not present that day and your teacher or a professor appreciated it. But that work, that specific aspect which the teacher appreciated was not done by the three of you, it was done by the fourth person who is not present today. How many times would we have said, no sir, it's not me, it's he who did it. Do we have that courage of conviction to say that, no sir, it was he who did this good job, he's not here today. But on the contrary, if there is something goof up, it's very easy to say, uh, sir, uh, he did it, he's not here today. And that's very common in the workplace. To take credit or to give debit or to speak good or to speak kind, or to speak foul. All these aspects are very, very fine ingredients of the trust that you build in the organization for you. Nobody can ever say, this guy said this, I don't believe this. No, this guy can never do like this. This guy can never say like this. To me, that's trust. And businesses, going through transition, businesses going through various dynamics, 
every era will have its own challenges to deal with it but what i am talking of of learning unlearning your relationships your trust your interest in yourself in your growth these are timeless they are not contingent to the times or the eras that you are in a typewriter may have become a computer and a computer may have become a mobile and a mobile may become a wearable but those values those attributes of an individual are timeless regardless of whichever business environment you are in whichever era you are in it was true 1000 years ago it will hold true 1000 years from now one most important thing which we normally forget in this era of 24 by 7 we want services 24 by 7 we want access to services and products 24 by 7 but is something really 24 by 7 in that sense you go to a call center and say it's a 24 by 7 call center it's actually not a 24 by 7 there is a set of people who come work 8 hours and then go certain set of people who come 8 hours and then go and that's how it sums up to 24 hours right what do you think is actually 24 by 7 in life actually 24 by 7 actually 24 by 7 in life sorry breathing i can hold my breath for a few moments heart beat our entire body the only thing in this universe is 24 by 7 which functions is our human body and how much of importance or how much of stress do we lay on taking care of this 24 by 7 service that is rendered to our ambitions to our aspirations because we take ourselves so much for granted so much for granted and i'm not talking of having a regular day at the gym because any corporate guy or any one working will say boss i went to the gym for few months i tried it then you know i went there then i went to this thing chut gaya then you know it didn't happen again now i'm going to start again new year resolution it's not about doing a gym it's not about going for a walk whatever it takes to maintain your 24 by 7 service we were having a session yesterday by a uh, alternate uh, therapy healer a very interesting thing that lady said this two palms if you clasp together this is the size of your stomach this is the size of your stomach so what is the rest of it and when you say iska pet bahut bad gaya right so just think about it this is all we need to eat this is all we need to eat really the stomach needs only this much the rest of it is all what our tongue takes what our senses take yeah but we binge we have reasons for not maintaining ourselves we have excuses and we have valid excuses that this doesn't work for us but the fact of the matter is that if you are going to neglect this 24 by 7 service to you this is the biggest challenge that you're going to face can you think of regressing your age can you think of regressing your age because age is a number but can you think of regressing your body condition can you think of making your body as capable as agile as it can be regardless of age and that's the biggest challenge our job is stressful 
is going to be stressful. When we are talking of work-life balance, we are talking of resilience, we are talking of learning all the while. One thing that we need to keep in mind is, this service is available to us by our body free of cost. And another thing that I learned yesterday is, medicines don't cure you, therapies don't cure you. It is your body which cures you. That's a separate subject that we'll get into. But what I wanted to bring back on the table here is that regardless of whichever business era you are in, regardless of whichever profession you are in, regardless of whatever your work schedules are, if you are not able to devote time to yourselves, to your physical fitness, we are not talking of building biceps and six packs. We are talking of being just an, what is an agile organization? What is nimble footedness? It's not only in thought, but in body action as well. So coming to a closure of this session, I wanted to dwell upon things which have not been spoken the last two, two, two and a half days. Not, regard, not regarding, giving regard to the other facts that yes, globalization, IoT, artificial intelligence, they are all there and different people at different levels will deal it in the way they have to deal. But tomorrow, when you start your career, we spoke about our day one challenge, month one challenge, year one challenge. Didn't we? So what's that challenge for us? Learn, learn, learn. And know when to unlearn. Know when to unlearn. And then taking, relearning is not difficult. Learning is not difficult. The difficult part is unlearning. Can you be trusted? Because if I say, I will come at 5, I will be there at 5. If I say, I will send it tomorrow, I will send it tomorrow. If I say, I am coming in 2 minutes, the normal way we say, why say two minutes? Say I'm coming in 20 minutes. Nah? Who's saying no to you? Why I'm giving this example to you is because this builds into us the ability to short, short circuit. This develops in us traits of losing out on trust of people. Nobody said you come in necessarily in two minutes. Take 20 minutes. Somebody called you and said, oh, I'll call you back. Call back. Simple. The guy knows that if he said he'll call back, he'll call back. There's nothing to worry about it. These are the simple things and you will find it in yourselves. Am I fostering that trust? Am I being the one who will be seen? Am I developing the right relationship by building that trust? So with these few words, I want to wish the very best to you. I believe that we have all, in all of us, to deal with the challenges of not only the current times, of any times. We have it all in us. All we need to do is not to come in our own way. Because it's only we who comes in our own way and nobody else. So let's get out of our way and let's unleash our potential, regardless of whatever the times are. Thank you and all the best. Thank you, sir, for sharing your experiences, knowledge, and thoughts on how ecosystem of the business environment is changing continuously. You also talked about how one needs to be successful all-rounder to survive in this changing, dynamic world. We are grateful to have you here amongst us. We look forward for many more interactions on and off the dais. Thank you. May I now request Dr. K.K. Villuri, Director, Balaji Institute of Technology and Management, to present a memento to Mr. Deepak Chawla as token of our love and appreciation. <laughs>